Hello, this is Mark from I Am Organic Gardening, located in Zone 6B, and today I'm going to show you how to turn fall leaves into beautiful, rich leaf mold, then into rich topsoil, which will be supporting our soil food web, and also will mound it into a raised bed for better efficiency. And also welcome to part one of how to start a food forest and garden. It's been over a month now that I've been receiving leaves from my township from a clean source in the park system. And you can see that I filled up this field already, so I'm working on field number two. So I had to start placing all those fall leaves I've been receiving in field number one, and I'm filling this up quite quickly. This is where uh, the okra was growing last year, and also the popcorn plants and peppers and uh, lettuce. Now I'm going to move over to field number two, uh, which I'm slowly filling up, and that's where that rich topsoil is going to be located. So the first step after we receive our fall leaves, or you rake them up in your yard or get them in brown paper bags or any other way delivered to your garden, first thing you want to do is separate them so they are nice and fluffy. You want as much air as possible inside those leaves. Because right now, after people have compacted them and put them in bags or anything else, they usually are sometimes shredded because they've chipped them with their lawnmower, or even when I get them, uh, they bring them up in a vacuum that removes them from the ground and then they get chipped up and put into the back of a truck. And you can see that they're refined. Now, if you do not have them chipped and they're just full leaves, that's okay, I'll show you how to get around that. But you can use your lawnmower and chip them up. It will be beneficial for it. Um, I know you might be using a lot of fossil fuel for that, but you can also do that when you're picking up the leaves and collecting them in the bag so you can save on fuel and also the environment. And it is perfectly fine to mix grass clippings in with the leaves. You can see here, the grass clippings are that light green layers, almost like layers in a cake that have been added into this pile that I received. Now we're going to fluff this up a lot and then move it over to different parts of the farm. And we're only gonna stack it about maybe a foot, a foot and a half tall, because it will become compact again. But again, you want as much air as possible. That is the key for breaking these leaves down as quick as possible so you can have that rich topsoil in the end. And yes, you are making compost, but you're not making hot compost. You do not want this pile to ever heat up or your leaves to ever heat up above, let's say, 80 degrees. You just want them. My technique is to keep them below 80 degrees at all times. And also, too, is to keep the leaves as damp or as wet as possible. You want to pick an ideal location where you can make a strip of leaves or your organic matter. At the edge of your garden is the best. We have some old pepper plants here. Now if this is the back of your garden, the very last end of your garden, this is the last pathway between maybe you and your fence or the edge of your garden. You all have room. Make this a pathway and keep that always as a pathway of organic material. You can stack it up to two feet tall. The reason why you want to do this because you're going to be close to a water source that you need and also that you can turn it with a pitchfork if you need to or access it or even throw weeds into it in the future. Again, you do not wish to make it uh, into a pile more than two feet tall. You're never going to have to look for wood pallets or make a pile too tall for this process. It is a layering process that you're going to do and you're going to be adding air to it. Now to stop your leaves from blowing away in the winter time, you can buy cheap bird netting and lay it over the top and lay it down with some rocks on it. If you don't wish to buy bird netting to keep the leaves in place, uh, some places like myself, they'll stay in place because they're chopped up. You can add on top is some soil, your native soil. That is the key point that I'm stressing how to make it in eventually topsoil. If you add your regular topsoil to the top, like a layer about a quarter inch, you're going to leave those leaves in place. You're going to be able to have the rain go through the topsoil and filter down through the leaves. Now you have all your leaves in a strip in a pathway that you can work comfortably and get around with. Now, it's something as simple as this that I've noticed over the years. Now in the center of the pile, what you're just going to do is remove the leaves slightly to one side. And you're going to create a ditch anywhere from 5 to 7 inches wide. So when it rains or snows or whatever you have, 
all this water goes towards the center will keep the whole pile wet, increasing the fungal activity, air circulation coming out, not letting the heat up in the middle, and it's gonna start rotting those leaves ahead of time for you all winter long. And I also would like to suggest, a lot of people have rototillers that they've had for a long time in their gardens and they stop rototilling their gardens uh, because tilling is not beneficial to the soil in any way, shape, or manner. But now is a good time you can use that rototiller. You're not gonna disturb the soil underneath. You are gonna just keep going maybe once a month when you want to and just keep going back and forth and it's not really chopping up the leaves, but you're going to be aerating them. You're going to keep constantly moving them. You're going to take the wet leaves off the bottom and bring it to the top and the dry leaves to the bottom where they get more microorganisms and break it down. This will help break down all that material a lot quicker than just sitting in a pile. Aerating them and keep moving them. If you don't have a rototiller, again, just go out there with a pitchfork every so often and just make a couple holes in it. You don't have to do the whole thing at once or nothing else either. It's a time Time sequence, just a little bit at a time, makes a whole lot of difference. Now here's a good example I'd like to show you. We start with our fall leaves. We try to keep them as wet as possible as we can. If it doesn't rain, you have to add water. Then we add your native soil. Now this is my native soil, which is hard clay, you can see here, with small white rocks in it, and larger ones too. Now I will break this clay down into smaller pieces and add that into my leaves. This is a grinding agent. It almost acts like sandpaper. And so when you move this around or rotate this or pitchfork it, whatever to, you're gonna leave more air gaps in the leaves. They won't become as slimy. They're gonna still stay wet because it's organic matter, but this is gonna keep them separated, keep the air flow in there. Plus it's gonna help them, like I said, like sandpaper to grind them down, thus leaving you this beautiful leaf mold. We are not done yet with our leaf mold here. We have to make that into topsoil. And the only way to make it into topsoil is that we have to grow a root in it, which I'll explain in part two. I wanna thank you very much for watching part one. And in part two, we will be going over how to improve that topsoil, how to plant a cover crop, and also how to prepare to plant fruit trees in the middle of winter. Thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe.